Hello and welcome back to this series on Docker containers. We've been discussing the Dockerfile over the last several videos, and this will be our final video on Dockerfile, where I just want to talk about some of the things that you should think about while creating your Dockerfile. So let's start by going into our build images directory and that SSH server container image that we created in um, previous videos while we were learning how to use Dockerfile. And if I go ahead and I cat that Docker file, let's clear the screen and cat the Docker file. So first and foremost, your Docker image should be small. These Docker images are meant to be immutable and ephemeral and portable. So if it's a big bloated container, that does not lend itself well to portability. So here I'm using an Ubuntu 20.04 Granted, it's only about 270 meg to 300 meg. However, if I were to use an Alpine image, I can reduce that all the way down to five. And then after adding my elements, I can bring it up to 20, 25 meg. And that's a lot better, more portable, etc. cetera. Uh, second element is, as we discussed before, we don't want to use latest when we're doing our base image. Because if we have a large, complex Docker file, and something has changed in that base image and we're in a fast paced startup environment or we're automating or we're doing a release or something is going on that's that we don't want to introduce problems that we don't need it's better off to use a static label and we had discussed that several times before next piece is if you notice here my run line is a single run line that does the update and the installation of the packages in one line if I were to switch this and put in another run statement for another layer where I installed my applications, what would happen that could be negative on this is since the Docker build process will notice that the app get update has not changed, it won't try and update the packages. It'll leave it alone using the cached elements. And then when it runs the next line, you're not going to get anything that that's updated. So your packages will not get updated. However, if you change that single line, it'll always update first and then update the new packages that you need. Copying files into our Docker container. We wanna keep most of our data, especially dynamic data, obviously, out of our Docker container because they're supposed to be immutable and ephemeral. We wanna avoid keeping as much data off of our containers as possible. Um, Obviously, if you're deploying applications, you want to have those application files and whatnot copied in, but data that is relevant to it, such as database entries, et cetera, should not be inside that container. This will bring up the next logical thing is that you don't want in your Docker file to have any hard-coded passwords, secret keys, uh, et cetera. Um, if you are going to need those, in your Docker file, you can utilize the environment variables, but that should be entered at the build command by entering those in through dynamic variables, whether you get those out of something like a vault or another password management um, utility. So again, don't put them directly into your Docker file. You wanna put them into environment variables that are either entered in through the build process on the command line or maybe when the manifest Docker file is created by some sort of automation script and then um, removed afterwards. Another important point is services. Docker containers are supposed to be microservices. So you should not run multiple services inside your Docker container. And if you notice, you can only have one entry point or one command. So that also shows that within Docker itself discourages using multiple services within your container. Uh, you can get around this if you really wanted to by having a script inside your container that will run on entry point. So you can have your entry point run the script and the script has all the different things that you want in there. But try to avoid this because the, the point of the whole containerized application is to, to go away from those monolithic properties. In my videos, I've been running the Docker container as root. Um, this should be avoided. 
since I've been doing this for um, educational purposes, I, I did not change from the root user. However, you should not run your containers as root. So I think this is a good place to conclude the Docker file portion of this learning Docker series. In the next video, we'll go ahead and move on to Docker Compose, which is a terrific utility to use. And I wanted to play around with it just a little bit so that you guys know that it's out there and you can see what it's all about and how useful it is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.